Okeke, a wealthy man in the village of Idu, was found unconscious and severely injured. The village buzzed with questions. Who could have done such a thing to the well-known man? Okeke was known for his love of women. He enjoyed attention and liked to keep company with beautiful women. His first wife, Ngozi, was strong and resilient, but deep down, she was troubled by his wandering eye. Ngozi had stayed with Okeke through thick and thin. But every time she saw him with other women, a storm of jealousy brewed inside her. One day, Okeke brought a new woman into the home. Her name was Amoka, and she was as beautiful as she was charming. The household atmosphere grew tense as Amoka claimed Okeke's affection, watching Okeke with Amoka filled Ngozi with anger. She felt betrayed but did her best to stay calm, even as her heart grew heavier. Even after marrying Amoka, Okeke's eye continued to wander. The villagers shook their heads, wondering how many more wives he would bring home. Okeke found himself drawn to yet another woman, a young beauty named Chika. Chika was fearless, and her youth added to her confidence. She wasted no time challenging Amoka and Gozi for Okeke's attention. Chika openly defied Amoka and Gozi, claiming her place in Okeke's life. Her actions stirred more tension in the household, creating an atmosphere thick with rivalry. Ngozi, exhausted from the constant fights, decided she needed an ally. She approached Amoka, proposing they work together against Chika. Ngozi and Amoka hatched a plan. They would introduce Okeke to another woman, one who could draw his attention away from Chika. The two women searched for someone who would capture Okeke's eye. They found Ifenanya, a woman known for her beauty and ambition. When Gozi and Amoka approached Ifenanya, she agreed to their plan without hesitation. She saw an opportunity to gain wealth and power. Okeke met Ifenanya and was instantly captivated. Before long, he proposed to her, bringing her home as his fourth wife. With Ifenanya's arrival, Ngozi and Amoka felt a sense of relief. They believed Chika's hold over Okeke was finally weakening. But Chika was not one to surrender quietly. She felt betrayed and resolved to fight harder to regain Okeke's attention, the household became more divided. Each wife struggled to secure her place, and jealousy filled the air like poison dots in an effort to impress Okeke, Ifenanya decided to prepare a grand feast, hoping it would win her his favor once and for all. Ifenanya spent the day preparing Okeke's favorite dishes. She decorated the courtyard and even hired musicians to play his favorite songs. The household gathered for the feast. Despite the smiles and laughter, an unspoken tension lingered, each wife wondering who Okeke truly favored. Okeke feasted and drank, enjoying the night without realizing the storm brewing around him. He was unaware of the dark thoughts in the hearts of his wives. Later that night, after everyone had retired, a scream pierced the stillness. Servants rushed in to find Okeke tied up, unconscious and severely injured. Okeke's injuries were severe, and whispers of betrayal spread quickly through the village. Everyone wondered what had led to such a terrible act. Days later, Ifenanya confessed that she had harmed Okeke. Driven by jealousy and a misunderstanding, she had acted in a moment of madness. Ifenanya went on to reveal that Ngozi and Amoka had encouraged her, planting seeds of jealousy in her heart. The villagers could hardly believe the betrayal within Okeke's own household. They gathered to discuss the matter, their faces filled with disbelief. Ngozi and Amoka denied their involvement, but the damage was done. The village elders began investigating the truth behind Ifenanyo's words. Despite efforts to heal him, Okeke's injuries were too severe. He grew weaker with each passing day, leaving his household in shambles. The village elders called a meeting to decide the fate of the wives involved in the plot. The air was heavy with tension as the village gathered. The elders announced their decision. If Yonanya, Ngozi, and Amoka would be banished from Idu. Their actions had dishonored the village. Chika, left alone, saw her dreams crumble. 
She had fought so hard for Okeke's attention, only to lose everything in the end. In his final days, Okeke lay silent, his once strong spirit broken. Surrounded by his children, he passed away, leaving a tragic legacy. The villagers mourned Okeke, but they also whispered about the choices that had led to his downfall. His wealth and love for women had cost him dearly. After Okeke's death, his property was divided among his children. His household, once filled with laughter, was now silent. Parents in Idu told Okeke's story to their children, teaching them about the dangers of jealousy, greed, and betrayal. Ifyonanya lived a life of regret. She realized that her greed had destroyed the very life she once craved. Ngozi, once strong and stubborn, was now a shadow of herself. Her jealousy had cost her everything. Amoka, once beautiful and proud, now wandered alone, haunted by memories of the family she had lost. Back in Idu, Chika led a quiet life, avoiding the curious stares of villagers who knew her story. The elders often reminded the village of Okeke's story, using it as a warning against unchecked desires. As time passed, new families in Idu told Okeke's story, hoping the younger generation would learn from it. The elders spoke of harmony, urging the village to seek peace within their household. Idu was never the same after Okeke's death. He still left a scar on the village, a reminder of the cost of betrayal. With time, Chika found peace. She focused on raising her children, hoping to give them a life free from jealousy. If Yunanya wandered from village to village, her heart heavy with regret, never finding the peace she longed for. As the years went by, Okeke's story became folklore, told to children as a bedtime story with a moral. Every version of Okeke's story emphasized the dangers of jealousy, a lesson Idu would never forget. The villagers thought that greed led to ruin, reminding each other of the fate that befell Okeke and his wives. Okeke's wealth and love for women became a symbol of the danger of unchecked desires. Over time, the village of Idu began to heal from the tragedy. Though Okeke's tale was one of loss, it united the villagers in their resolve to lead honest and peaceful lives. Generations later, Okeke's story lived on, whispered by the fire at night. It became a lesson carved deep in the hearts of Idu's people, a reminder that love, without trust and respect, brings only sorrow.